him in front of the kid. So I'm walking faster. Because he is not, I'm not going to let him get in front of me. Now, the reason I didn't want to correct him in front of the kid, it would have scared her. Okay? So I want him to watch me. I want him to give me distance. Now, if that filly hadn't been tied there, I would have corrected him there. I would have kept my normal walking pace and I would have told him to back off of me. But instead, I chose to just walk past her, so I was still in front of him. So now, what I want him to do is pay attention to me. And I want him to give me space. So, I'm going to be crazy and I'm going to be nice. I'm not going to be in between. Because he's going to watch me if I'm crazy. But I'm not going to be necessarily he's relaxing his jaw right there. I want him to move his hip around. And I don't want him to lunge. So this is not, that's not good. So I want to teach him there. I want to teach him not to go that way and pull on me. Because when I lead him up to the trailer, if he does that, I have no control. Okay? So if I go like this, that's what I want him to do. I want him to bring that head and follow me. So if I come over here, that's what I want him to do. But I also don't want him to cut me off with his head. So I'm going to spend a little time giving him, getting him some distance. See, that's cutting me off with the head. See how I want to go this way? See how he's leading me? So I can either put his head back over here and go first. Now he's got me. I'm going to bring this one If I come over here. And you always defend your face. on trail, but that is just more miles on him. 
Okay, she said he spooks on the trail, but all he needs is more miles. Mm -hmm. And the trailer. What about the trailer? He goes, you have to have a whip behind him to get him in. You have to have a whip behind him to get him in. When you get him in, he goes flying out. And when he goes in, he comes flying out. And then he does not do rope behind his butt, but I think that's due to a previous owner. Well, a lot of people think putting a butt rope around the horse and pushing him in works. A lot of people think threading the halter rope through the front so that when they pull back, they can't get out. And I don't want to sound holier than now, but when I was a teenager, I tried all those tricks, so I'm guilty. So when I found this trailer method, I, boy, did I change. So I am guilty of, really, of most all of the training that I do, I'm guilty of doing it all wrong at some point in my life. Okay? So what else? And then he does not do his back feet. Okay. He doesn't do his back feet. You can pick him up, but you can't uh, have him up for a long period of time. See, this is going to be great because this is going to be a clinic course for a few clinics. <laughs> No, I'm serious. I don't want you to fix all these habits. We're not going to deal with them today. Otherwise, I'd have to charge you 200 instead of 40 okay? But I'm serious. Now, now let me just give you guys, I'm going to get in the shade here. He's following me, and he's stopping. He's stopping too close, and I want him further back, okay? So this is what I hear, okay? Now, first of all, I want to pay him a compliment. They rode the horse over here, including down River Road. So hey, my hat's off to you because he's a broke horse that you're not afraid to ride. But see, when I have a horse that spooks on the trail, that scares me because you're out of control on the trail. You can get hit by a car, you can fall down on the blacktop. There's a lot of things that can go wrong. So I try to teach a horse not to spook and how to handle spooking at home before I go on the trail. Does that mean I never have spooky horses on the trail? Of course I have spooky horses on the trail. But then I have something that I do and then they go, oh, that's right. And they learn not to spook on the trail, okay? Anytime your horse has a problem with anything, then he's deciding, okay, I'm not gonna let you clean my feet. I'm not gonna go by the scary thing. I'm not, he's trying to tell, and when he leaves, he wants to be the leader and he wants you to pull on him. So he's in charge of a lot of things, which means you're not the boss. Now I hate using that term, the boss, the leader. You are not the boss because you're mean, or you hire someone who has a bigger stud chain. Because you notice how I'm joking around, this horse is respecting me right now, because I've done a few things to him. Yeah, he's going to turn very nicely this way. Oh, wait, I wanted to bring me two eyes, he's not. And there, I just got two eyes, and I didn't have to pull on my rope. So the first thing you guys have to learn is you're not stronger than your horses. So you have to choose a method that has the horse give you stuff instead of, do you need a chair or something? There's quite a few chairs. Okay, they're nervous. Okay. Um, so I'm just getting him to pay attention. If I can come in here and he does what I say in here, I have a reasonable chance he might do what I say out there because I'm starting to tell him that I'm a leader. I'm starting to tell, teach him that I get my own way, but, it's okay not to do what I want. He hasn't learned that yet. Perfectly okay for the horse not to do what you want. And you just bug him until he changes his mind. So that's a concept. We start teaching that in round pin 101. Okay, so um, all I have to do is, I know that if he goes in the trailer, he's probably gonna come out really quick. I know since he stopped and didn't want to go by the trailer, I might lead him up to that trailer and he might go lefty righty because he did some avoidance on the other side. But he's not doing anything that other horses don't do. So all I have to do is be prepared for that and um, have something that I'm gonna do when he does something. But I'm not gonna make him get in the trailer. I could care less whether he gets in the trailer. But he's gonna go in the trailer because he doesn't wanna learn stuff out here. Does everyone understand that? I'm never making a horse go in the trailer. I, I jokingly say they go on the trailer because they don't want to learn anything more outside the trailer. So as soon as you start thinking you're making them go on the trailer, you're, do, you're teaching them wrong in so many ways. You're making them go in the river. You're making them go across the mud. And every time you find the obstacles like that, you have a fight because the horse knows there's going to be a fight. And then he's finally going to do it. Sometimes they finally do it. Sometimes they don't. Okay? Do you have any questions? Anybody so far? Okay. So now I'm going to put a cue on his head. 
And if he doesn't follow me, that's okay. I just eat out the road. But I'm very careful not to pull on the rope if I don't have to. Because I'm trying to give him the opportunity to not pull on my rope. Okay, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that he's not scared to death of the whip. Huh? He is? Well, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to teach him not to be scared of the whip. Okay? And he says, well, I think I'll go that way. That's fine. I said, well, that's fine. I'm going to put it on this side then. Okay? So the owner just said that he's afraid of the whip. So I'm going to teach him not to be afraid of the whip. Okay? Because he thinks, because I picked this up, I'm going to use it on him. Now, I would be doing the same thing. I would have found out if he was afraid of the whip because I always check things like this out. But I do like it when I get a certain few, a few things from the owner because then I can be better prepared. Yeah, so now I have a horse that when I picked up this whip, he thought I was going to do something with it. And now he says, wow, she's just flipping the flies off of me. Okay? So this is nice. So he's happy. So now I want him to move from the whip. And that was nice. So I'm going to teach him that. I'm going to pluck. And if I tap, I want him to move. Ideally, I want him to move this way or that way. But I don't really, as long as he moves, I don't care. So now I've just hit him with the whip. He said, I knew it, I knew it. So I'm going to tell him I'm not going to hit him with the whip. I'm going to pluck and I'm going to ask him to move. And he did. So. Does everyone see how, and he's not relaxed, by the way. He's not licking and chewing his jaw. I don't care. <laughs> he's cute. So I taught him to hide behind me, and now I'm just making it easier on me by using this whip and giving him another cue, clocking and moving. so far before I go to the trailer. I can't believe it. No questions? Okay. So now everybody, if you want to watch me do trailer stuff, pick up your chairs and go over there. There's nice shade back there. <clears throat> but since I'm going to be right here, and the main thing I ask is, 
nobody get too close, and I don't want people moving. So you might be a little close. Further back, Hannah. <laughs> right about there, that's good. Oh, one thing I forgot to do, I forgot to throw my rope over his back and make sure that doesn't scare him, so let me try that. Because that's how I load a horse, and sometimes I get all this prep work done, and I chuck the rope over their back, and they freak out. So he looks like he's fine with it. Okay, so here we go. So I'm going to try to do the same thing at this trailer that I did with the kid. I'm going to act like it's not a big deal. And I'm just going to come up to it, okay? So I'm not going to look at the horse or dress the horse or anything. I just want him looking at the trailer. And the only problem we have with this trailer, it's not a big problem because I can get a horse in anything, is it's a high step up. And I want to make sure that we don't hit this with his knee or anything. But it's a nice, safe trailer. It has big, uh, big I like this trailer, very solid. Thank you, Susan, for lending it to us for this. My trailer is a, a ramp, and I don't like ramps quite as much. Okay. So I have a horse standing fairly relaxed by the trailer. I'm going to throw up oh, now. He just did something, and I'm so glad you guys have rewind buttons. All I did was slide my foot on some of these chips, and he flinched like I whipped him. So right now I know this is not a relaxed horse. He's standing here quiet, but a little stupid thing like me just moving a little bit of dirt, doing a little slip thing made him flinch. So just something else. I'm just, I thought he was going to like walk right in. I mean, he might walk right in, but I also know that he can't. Um, the owner's shaking the head. He's not going to walk right in. So we'll see. Here we go. Lena's corral. Because Sophie is trying to help me, and all it's going to do is distract the horse. So I just asked him to come forward again, and he did very nicely. Leave him alone for a split second, and I asked again. And he came forward, and I leave him alone. Even though he's backing away, and I don't want him to back away, I have to leave him alone for a minute or two. That's good. So all that I'm doing is I'm giving him a release for giving me a go forward. That's all I'm doing. Giving him a release for giving me a go forward. And I don't allow him to look away from the trailer, so I correct him every time he looks away. how long we do see doe out here. I got more patience than the horse does. I would 
love it when they poop because a lot of times after they poop they go in. Not always, but it's always a good thing.
what he's doing is actually extremely good. Coming in and coming out. I just need to not talk. See, the sad thing is he thinks I want him to go in the trailer. I want him to just quit moving. in there longer when he went in, but he looked at the trailer again. And there's a nice sigh and there's a nice lick of the lips. Okay? When, when you're retraining a horse, a horse that doesn't want to go on the trailer, he feels safer out here and I have to convince him that, I, that it's safe in there also. So when he comes out and I leave him alone, I'm not accomplishing a whole lot about making him stay in but I'm accomplishing a lot in teaching him that it's okay, he can come out if he's not ready for this yet. But do you see how I get in the zone and I don't care how many times he wants to feel safe coming out because we can go back in again. We can go back in again. Oh, that was really good. Can we go back in again? So you don't lose your temper. You just sit there and you keep doing it. And he's going to get tired of practicing going in and out. Now that horse keeps 
fine because she's new in training. She hasn't been here a week. Then I'm going to pull her out and tie her up because I do not tolerate fine. Okay? And she's learning that, and she wants attention. The baby is on the wrong side of the corral, and she likes it when the baby goes and pays attention to her. So I'm just saying, I'm going to let her do that for maybe five minutes, and she continues to do that. That's a $5,000 pen. I'm going to go tie her up, and she can go do it somewhere else. So that's just another way I train horses. So here we go again. a great work 
work out, and when they get done, you know what the person says? Well, that downward transition sucked. And boy, he's still thinking about the gates. And I feel like saying, what about the 95% of the stuff your horse did that was amazing? Okay? So instead of thinking about what your horses don't do, think about what they are doing and expand on that. And the thing is, I'm waiting for him to come out so I can put him back in, and he just went, I think I'll just stand here. Maybe I don't have to do anything else. So this is actually a good stop point if I really, really, really had a dangerous horse. This would be a good stop point and do a trailer again, but I'm not going to because plenty of you guys want to see him do it, right? But do you see how now he wants to be in the trailer? I'm not making him, am I? He says, well, I don't like, yeah, this is hard work. That's what he's saying. And he says, well, at least when I'm in here, she leaves me alone. Okay? And he's smiling. As long as the owners are smiling, I'm doing a good job. So, let me ask you guys a question. Does this horse look relaxed? Who said no? I can't okay, see. Okay, what makes you think he's not relaxed? Oh, uh, no, no, no. Then go look at his face and his ears and his eyes. Yeah, his mind. He's standing there going, and his ears are like this. He's not going, okay? So I'm talking about his mental state of mind. He's very relaxed. Want to walk over here and see? He'll stay there. No, if you let the to stop and tie him up and work on the next one. But then again, if I work on the next one, it's only going to get hotter. It might be harder to do them when it's hotter, okay? So th this is where you have to use your judgment in asking him to do the next step. Am I really leaving him alone? Because with problem horses, a lot of times I break it up into different lessons. So I'm not an ogre all in one day. And the biggest thing they said was, he doesn't stay in the trailer, and he's staying in the trailer now. So I'm going to see if I can position him in the trailer. So I need him to step up.
now he's further in the trailer. I just don't want people clapping or laughing or distracting him. He's further in the trailer than he's ever been. So I'm going to leave him alone because he's further in. So you notice how when I started saying further in, further in, he said, oh, I can't do that. But I want him to be comfortable further in. I also want to be able to push on this hip and have him move it over. If I do it with the divider and he shoots out and slams the divider over, then I'm, I've, I've lost. So I just need him to get in there better. Now he says, well, gee, I guess I can be in here. Not a problem. So I can either use my hand to push him over or I can use the divider. Um, can somebody go and open that window? Just because it's hot in here. And I don't want the bars down, just the window part. Yeah. That's good. I just walk away. That's good. That just gives him, it, it gives maybe us a little more ventilation. It also gives him something to look at out there. Oh, it's already cooler. I can feel, I can feel the air coming through there now. So let me see if I can use the divider to push him over. Well, that's pretty good. He saw me bringing the divider over. He's still here. And now he says, no, i got to come out. Not a problem. Can you get back in? He can't refuse to move. If he stands here and refuses to move, I'm going to have him back out. reaches any kind of a touch or flick because I started out going like this I didn't start going like this until he sat there and did nothing okay what it is is it just has to be con consistent and he has to know that it's okay to come out he has to choose now he just got tense so I'm not going to push him over he's tense and he just went like that so I'm just going to wait and I'm going to say okay I'll take this way you want to come out and he says yeah, I think it's too much work. I'll say it. I'll come over and do it again. So, he says, well, I need to come out. Uh, now his brain's in gear, you see? Well, maybe I won't come all the way out. Okay? Well, I'll do it again. And he says, oh, here comes that divider. I think I will come all the way out. This is too close. <laughs> to go in a little more. Okay? Oh, and I just heard him relax his jaw. I can hear him chewing. Okay, now I'm touching his butt and I'm leaving it alone just to see if maybe he wants to come out again. And if he tolerates that, then I'll push it a little bit more. Oh, he actually shifted his leg. He's got his weight off the left foot, and now he's pushing on my hand. So we just leave that, because I'm not going to push harder. Now he says, I need to come out. Oh, he says, maybe not. So again, we have a thinking horse. A thinking horse. So he's thinking, do I want to stay in and go back in? Or do I want to figure out what she wants me to do? Somebody picked me 
out and put me in a refrigerator box and close the lid, I'd be a little worried. So, I mean, I don't think it's unusual that a horse is afraid of a tight spot. But you see how now, all I'm doing is putting him back where he was, putting the divider over where it was, and he just has to learn that the stock is where he last left it. He's doing pretty good. So I'm going to use a judgment call. If we had to haul him somewhere, I could close this. See, he just thought about coming out and he changed his mind. I think this is a good place to stop. What do you think? You're the owner. Well, we're going to haul him home after. Oh, well then I'll put him in that trailer. But I'm serious. Going home in my trailer. <laughs> okay, well then we'll finish it later. I'm just saying this is a great place to stop. Because look, I'm pushing this divider over. He just took his weight off that lot leg and he set it back down. Well, He's what? happy in there. So I'm just saying, what? Well, what about once you close it and then it locks and then it we deal that it. we deal with that when we uh, um, when we load when we're teaching him the next phase. Okay. okay. And that those are good questions. Let me take him out. It's roasting in here. Let me take him out. Oh, and he's still in here, and I'm walking up to his head to grab the rope. So, that's a good thing. You, so, what I'm trying to tell you is he has made up his mind. It's better in here than out there. He has made that up. And he just stomped the blind and didn't back up. So, I'm going to take him out before it's his idea. 